So yeah, I got to telling him, you know, I needed a friend in my life. I needed someone to talk to, uh, someone I could just open up with and be honest with. And uh, it, he told me, you know, I'm not your friend, I'm your father. You know, at that point in time, I didn't exactly realize what that meant. You know, because he'd always yell at me for dumb crap that I did as a kid, and I didn't need that in my life. I needed someone I could open up to about anything, you know, and not be judged. And so it seemed like at that point in time, when I was living in West Clinton with him, I kind of gave up, you know, like I was feeling alone. I was starting to just do my own thing, started hanging out with friends that were into like smoking, drinking, partying, into rap music, you know, just you know, doing the juvenile thing type of way, and that seemed cool to me, you know, and a lot of my friends, I could actually just be honest and open with them and talk to them about anything, and they were just there to console me, you know. Made a lot of good friends along the way, and, uh, you know, but it still felt kind of lonely, you know, like, they were the ones that I was turning to, and I ended up running into a lot of friends that were really great, you know, uh, thank you for them, you know, and uh, I ended up running into a lot of people that I opened up my heart to and everything like that, and they just let me down, you know, and that was, you know, kind of the beginning of the end, you know, and my grades started to slip, you know, I started to just go down the wrong path, you know, it was almost like I chose the path, but at the same time, I started to go down it. And I always had it in the back of my mind, that vision, you know, that so-called girl that I was supposed to meet, it was like, okay, well, I'm going down the wrong path anyway, so... Uh, I'm either going to die nuts over this <laughs> over this vision or I'm going to meet this girl, you know. So it's kind of like, okay, well, whatever, you know. I, I, I didn't have no worries in the world at that point. And so, uh, you know, grades started to slip. You know, I ended up getting straight A's all the way up until about fourth grade, you know. Then the fifth grade is when I, you know, started, you know, hanging out with, you know, certain individuals that like to party, have fun, stuff like that. And it was fun at the time. You know, of course, you get caught up in worldly things and, you know, things of that nature, stuff like that. And so I uh, ended up, uh, you know, living with my dad, finished out elementary school and moved again, you know. And this is after uh, moving, you know, to Oregon a couple of times and, uh, you know, moving out to, you know, West Clinton back with my dad a couple of times. So, you know, starting over in a new school over in uh, Layton, you know, Central Davis Junior High. You know, it was a fresh new beginning, fresh new start, met all new people, and uh, that's when I really started just getting out of hand, you know, and, uh, you know, just started partying really heavy, started getting into drinking, started getting into drugs, smoked pot for the first time, you know, and the weird thing about it is, you know, it was like, I knew that my dad did it, but I didn't know I was going to like it that much, you know, I was a really big pothead for like the longest time. And, uh, you know, I got into that pretty heavy and I wasn't so much of a drinker, you know, like I would drink every once in a while, but that wasn't really my gig. Pot was like the main thing. Like it was just like the coolest thing ever, you know, it was like getting high. was just like the cat's meow, you know, met a lot of friends who smoked pot and we just had fun playing video games, getting high, having the occasional drink here and there, but it never really got too serious. Anyway, uh, ended up, uh, Living with my dad for a good minute there in Layton, ended up going to high, uh, junior high and high school out in Layton, taking the really bad route, you know, I ended up getting busted for drugs left and right, I ended up getting, you know, popped with pipes, uh, weapons at school, I got kicked out of school, uh, sent to alternative schools and just on a really bad route, black sheep of the family, sort of say, doing my own thing, not a care in the world, didn't care about anything but myself and just really distances distancing myself from everybody because you know i got comfortable being alone you know it was almost kind of like i got a solitude out of it you know it was like i didn't have to deal with anybody else's bs you know I was, as long as i had to deal with myself then I, I got okay with that you know but there was ever there was that feeling of loneliness just like continuously like all the time you know it was like i didn't have anybody i could talk to i mean yeah my dad was there but you know even when i would talk to him it almost seemed like every talk that I would talk to him, I'd get in trouble. And, you know, he'd physically, you know, hit me every once in a while. He'd call me names, you know, I was a chubby kid, you know, and he'd call me fat and treat me like I was a stupid retard, you know, especially bringing, bringing home bad grades and stuff like that. So it made me just really rebel, you know, I was like, okay, well, whatever, you know, I'm going to do whatever I'm going to do anyway, because you're going to yell at me anyway. And uh, that led to me lying to him a lot, you know, because I didn't care. I figured I was going to get in trouble anyway. So why tell him the truth? You know, so my lying became a problem in that aspect and just, I didn't care, you know. I had lost all cares, just didn't really care about nothing at this point. 
started getting into like you know I'd given up on God at that point you know I ended up getting bad grades I prayed about him but I still got bad grades and I kind of took it out on God I was all like oh you know I prayed about it and I still got bad grades you know and you know, why didn't you give me good grades da, 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 da. I prayed for it you know so I really kind of just distanced myself from God and started getting into you know looking into other aspects you know like I knew about God didn't really know so much about Jesus I heard about him but I never really read the Bible or anything like that like I kind of dabbled in it and even like the Book of Mormon and stuff like that you know just kind of like trying to find my way so to say and uh, you know I started uh, getting into you know like dark art practices and devil worship type stuff but not really too into it just kind of dabbling into it and seeing what it's all about and, you know I got a Ouija board check that out that was lame it was stupid didn't even work probably didn't even know how to work it whatever you know uh, got into like witchcraft spells and stuff like that was reading about that never really got too big into that uh, started doing like tarot cards and rock readings and you know all that stuff that goes along with the you know the the arts sort of say you know and one day, just out of the blue, it was kind of weird, it kind of hit me, it was like, hey, you know what, this ain't me, you know, this ain't my bag, man, you know. And uh, I kind of ended up just, uh, you know, giving up on it, you know, kind of, you know, just said, sorry, God, you know, I've kind of lost my way, stuff like that. And then, you know, one of the times, even when I was, you know, before I started smoking weed really heavily, you know, it almost felt like the Holy Spirit was telling me like, hey, you know, like, I can't be around you when you're doing this. And I was like, well, I'm going to do it anyway. And if you need to leave, leave. And it almost felt like the Holy Spirit left me, you know, like it took off. Like it was like, I can't be around this, you know, like if you're going to do this, I can't be here with you. And it was almost like that spirit that I used to talk to as a kid left, you know, and I gave it permission. I was like, okay, well, whatever, you know, I want, I want to get high, you know, is I'm going to do it anyway. And, uh, you know, I just, I went through a really dark time, you know, and, uh, I ended up coming back to God, you know, I didn't really know God on a personal level at that point, but you know, I, I forgave God. I was like, you know what? I was the one who got the bad grades. You know, I, I had nothing to do with you. Yeah, you know, things might have been different or whatever, but hey, it is what it is. You know, I, I kind of let things go with God, asked him for forgiveness, you know, and kind of just kept God on the back burner, but didn't really worship or care as much as I could, you know, or even know Jesus personally. Anyway, a few years later, my dad ended up moving out. Uh, I had ended up, you know, making it out of high school, got my GED, you know, uh, things were looking kind of up, you know, I was working over at Hill Air Force Base, he decided to move with his girlfriend out in Wyoming at the time, and uh, he ended up leaving me the apartment, I ended up moving one of my buddies in who was really into smoking pot, you know, I even told him, I was like, dude, you don't even have to pay rent, as long as you have pot, you can live with me, he's all like, really? I'm like, yeah, dude, I got rent covered, you know, but, you know, if you're gonna live here, just don't run out of weed, you know, because that was my gig. You know, and he's like, hey, can my woman live with me, you know, live with us? And I'm all like, yeah, you don't even care, you know. And uh, I had ended up, uh, you know, well, not to get ahead of myself, but yeah, uh, that girl in high school, uh, I ended up meeting her. The girl from The Vision. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I ended up meeting her and stuff like that. And I was kind of freaked out. Like, I kind of didn't you know want to let myself be vulnerable let alone freak her out and be like oh yeah i had a vision of you when i was like six or seven you know hey i've been waiting for you my whole life sort of say you know and it, it was like a touchy situation well uh, i ended up getting to know her and she had a boyfriend who's like one of my buddies like i knew the dude so out of respect i was like hey you know i ain't gonna try anything on you i'll you know i'll just be a friend i'd rather have you as a friend than lose you completely altogether you're like the chick from my vision you know like holy crap I thought I was nuts you know I ended up finally I ended up meeting you you know <laughs> so uh, we ended up becoming good friends we were friends for probably about a good year and a half you know and I was kind of just biding my time you know like hey if, if she ends up getting single maybe I'll you know hit her up you know or whatever let her know you know what's going on and how I truly felt but at the time it was kind of like out of a respect thing for my friend and then she ended up breaking up with him and I was like oh, okay cool you know an opening you know maybe I'll ask her out something like that then she ended up hooking up with another one of my friends which was kind of like okay well whatever you know I'm not gonna you know stab my buddy in the back you know and the buddy she ended up hooking up with the second time I was closer with than the first guy that <laughs> you know like we were even closer buddies you know so I was like all right you know I'm gonna step on your toes bro well they were still kind of together and then you know they're towards like they were still in a relationship like it kind of started to bite at me like I was like 
harboring feelings for her because I knew this chick for like a year and a half. We talk on the phone all the time. Seemed like she might have had the same feelings for me. So I had to get that out there. Well, I ended up telling her how I felt and things obviously didn't work out. And, you know, she felt like I was lying to her, trying to manipulate her, stuff like that. It wasn't even like that, really. But at the same time, you could see it that way. You know, so case Ross Rod it is what it is, you know, whatever, you know, you can't make everybody like you. So uh, that was one pain that I went through in my life that was really kind of tragic, you know, because it was at that juncture that I really felt alone, you know. So I ended up giving up on everything, you know, I started drinking, smoking, doing crystal meth, getting really heavy into drugs. That's when I was like really tweaking out hella hardcore and uh, just no cares in the world, you know. Uh, things seemed like they were going pretty good. I ended up uh, meeting this chick online from Idaho. Uh, she ended up moving in with me and seemed like things were going good. You know, I had a girlfriend at the time. I had a car, was working over at Hill Air Force Base, moved my buddy with the pod in, had a roommate. You know, I knew if I ever needed help with rent, he'd help me out, but it was kind of one of those things where I was making good money. You know, I had rent covered. It wasn't that big of a deal. And, uh, January 1st, I believe, 2001, uh, my apartment caught on fire. New Year's Day, I woke up to a shell of what my apartment used to be. Carport beam landed on my car, just barely got it paid off, had liability insurance, done. Didn't see a dollar out of it, never seen another car after that, had to move out. Red Cross helped us out. Uh, we ended up moving into a uh, motel room for about a week, and then they ended up setting us with a... Uh, uh, place uh, for a couple of months uh, at a new apartment. So thank you Red Cross for that. Uh, ended up losing my job at Hill Air Force Base, not only just because being stupid, but they ended up uh, getting bought out by a new contractor. So uh, they didn't end up hiring me on. I ended up getting let go from there. Times were pretty tough. I was working with my roommate at the time, but you know, uh, I didn't really have a problem with him, but I guess like living in close quarters, you know, in that point in time after going through everything, you know, we kind of ended up button heads and uh, we just kind of like dipped. So uh, me and uh, my girlfriend at the time, we ended up taking off over here to St. George, Utah, where uh, I moved with my mom. I knew that she was terminally ill. You know, I figured, you know, she could give me a place to stay uh, and I could help her carry groceries and little stuff like that, you know. So ended up kind of getting on my feet a little bit here. And I talked to my girlfriend at the time and asked her, where do you want to leave? Where do you want to move? Where would you like to live? She said, Idaho it was closer to her parents. So we ended up moving out to Idaho. It was some podunk hole in the wall, crappy apartment, you know, and uh, I was still smoking weed and drinking at the time. She wasn't really too into it. She never really liked me doing the drugs and alcohol thing. And it was basically almost like the same thing between my mom and my dad, you know, we ended up splitting up. I ended up uh, moving with the dude out there who kind of knew what we were going through. He kind of took me in for a minute, lived with him for a while, really cool dude. Uh, we got along great, but, you know, push came to shove and it kind of seemed like, you know, I was lonely out there. I didn't really have anybody. Why am I, what am I even doing out here, you know, living with this dude, you know, when I could be living with my mom and helping her out. So I ended up moving back to St. George. I've been here ever since and, uh, you know, had my ups and downs, but, you know, between my uh, mom and my stepdad still fighting, even to that day, a lot of problems, you know, I really just started a while out, you know, got back into meth again, got back into drinking, uh, ended up meeting a new girl that I worked with, and uh, we ended up, uh, you know, going out for a while, and things seemed like they were going good, but uh, she ended up getting way heavy into heroin, and uh, that kind of wrecked our relationship, and, uh, you know, she had kids and stuff like that, and, you know, it almost seemed overbearing you know because you know we were both going through our own stuff and uh, I had to give it up you know I had to get out of there you know I had to get my stuff together and heroin wasn't really my bag you know I tried it a couple of times but it was you know it always just get me sick man and just really you know not a good thing and so I ended up breaking it off with her and we went our separate ways and uh, you know uh, started doing a couple of other different jobs uh, started getting into meth way bad at this point uh, met this one dude and his girl and uh, you know we started slaying and hard you know money wasn't a thing anymore uh, really deep into smoking weed stuff like that and just you know off the rails you know and uh, my mom had to kind of intervene on that kind of step in a little bit of an intervention she's like hey you know you're going off the rails stuff like that you know if you still want to consider living here then you're gonna have to get your crap together and drop all your friend crap and you know 
come and live here, either that or just go live with your friend. And I knew that my mom was kind of serious at that point, you know, she kind of stepped in, you know, and helped me get off of the meth and everything like that. And so I dropped it. And uh, I had to distance myself from a lot of people at that point in time and kind of get my stuff together, especially that dude I was hanging out with and his girl, you know, I knew I was heading down a wrong route if my mom's giving me the pep talk, you know, so kind of got myself back in order, ended up, uh, you know, trying to date, you know, a couple of times, ended up getting stood up a couple of times, things didn't exactly work out. And I finally just ended up praying to God. I was like, hey, you know, if I'm meant to be alone, then so be it, you know, but, you know, hopefully you send somebody my way that, you know, will be there for me and love me for who I am and, you know, just stay there with me, you know, regardless of how and who I am, you know, I'm not perfect, but at the same time, I needed something solid in my life. And uh, that's when I ended up meeting my wife. <laughs> no more than, you know, it didn't even seem like no more than a couple of months after I prayed that prayer. I ended up asking this girl out and she said yes. And, you know, we ended up having some really good times and got to know each other. And, you know, we were still drinking and smoking in the world, stuff like that. But, you know, her family was really into Jesus Christ and, you know, kind of pointed me in the direction of Christianity. And, you know, I got to know about Jesus a little bit more than I normally would. And, uh, started following him and uh, ended up getting baptized and uh, you know even after I got baptized you know I was still dealing with my own problems some of my own addictions and stuff like that and kind of started slipping back into the world you know still smoking pot still drinking on occasion and it seemed like you know doing that little bit here and there you know just kind of wedged itself into my marital life you know uh, the weed, it wasn't so much a big of a problem. Like, yeah, I'd gotten busted for it in the past and I had a lot of court stuff that I needed to handle and get ironed out. But that's when the liquor kind of became, you know, something that kind of took control and became something a little bit more than it should have. Uh, I started saying things that I never really wanted to say, doing things that I don't remember doing, having to apologize for stuff that I don't even remember, hurting people loved ones physically emotionally spiritually mentally and financially just all around it had taken its toll on my jobs I've lost a couple of jobs because of it and it, I almost lost my marriage over it you know I'm, I thank God that I still have my wife even to this day she's seen a change in me it's been a work in progress I'm not perfect you know I'm taking baby steps you know uh, I've been clean off alcohol and weed for I'd have to say probably a good couple of weeks now and uh, you know, things have been going good. You know, I rededicated my life back to Christ. I've given up the porn addictions. I've, you know, and that was something that kind of stemmed from my dad too. You know, I remember being young and he gave me a big old huge stack of Playboys and he's like, hey, have fun, you know, you want these, go for it, you know? And so I never really thought that was really wrong. Never really thought pot was wrong. Never really thought drinking was wrong, especially with the music and the partying and everything like that. I started, you know, I've done X a few times and went to raves, you know, I, I was just a really big party, you know, and just in the world and ended up just being a real piece of sh crap. <laughs> I'm trying to work on my filthy language too. So yeah, I just really started going off the rails and realized it. it's, it's not me, man. Like, you know, I've started losing control, especially with the drinking. Uh, with the drinking, I've never really had a problem with it when I was younger, but now that I've gotten older, it's almost easy access. You can go to the store and buy it and just go nuts, you know, and I just started to realize that it was making me into somebody that I know I'm not, you know, like I was, like I said, you know, I was saying a lot of stuff that I should have just never said, doing a lot of stuff that I just never really should have done and just hurting my friends and family around me, losing jobs and just becoming just a low life, sort of say. And uh, I caught myself and uh, I never really had a problem with addiction. I've usually been able to just stop flat out. But, you know, with the alcohol, it almost seemed like, how am I gonna get my next bottle? You know, maybe I should go get my next bottle. And, you know, when I would drink, I started to notice that uh, there was two different personalities in me, almost possessed like by a uh, demon, sort of say, you know, because when I'm normal, I, I act normal, you know, but when I drink, I'm like a completely different person. And then like, I'm doing stuff that I don't remember, you know, like, okay, no, you know, like, I don't like having to apologize for other people's problems, let alone my own that I don't remember, you know, so I had to cut that out of my life. And uh, when you get caught in the loop, that's what I like to call it. 
know, bread after dark is a completely diff different person. We call it after dark, and uh, you, it's not you. You do stupid crap when you're drunk. I mean, when you're on pot, yeah, you might be kind of loopy or whatever, but you never lose control. When you're drinking, you can lose control, you know? I mean, there's only so much the body can take before it just clocks out, sort of say. And so I noticed that happening a lot. We ended up becoming bread after dark a lot. Done a lot of things I regret, said a lot of things I regret, but I've caught on to that. Uh, lost some jobs, you know, and just trying to get my life back in order. So I had to cut it out. I've been in the loop, which is what I like to call it, where you're not drinking to really have fun anymore. You're drinking to ease the withdrawal symptoms, sort of say. Like, I had the shakes and, you know, having a hard time sleeping. My mind's racing, my eyes going, you know, left and right when I'm trying to sleep. And just having really funky, weird dreams and just going through all of it. So, I've now managed to, you know, stay away from pornography, uh, anything porn related. Staying away from drugs, staying away from alcohol, working on my filthy language and just trying to better myself all around, you know, I mean, I know that a lot of people, they're like, oh, you know, it's cool, da 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 It's the way of the world, bro, you don't need it. Uh, I've read in the Bible, in Colossians, you know, that was kind of like the real game changer for me is when I started opening my Bible and talking to God. I, I asked God for forgiveness, you know, release me of all my sins, you know, the ones that I do know about, the ones that I forgot about, and just really decided to dedicate my life back to God and kind of just get my crap together, you know, like, I don't want to go to hell, I never did. You know, I just really needed somebody to rely on, and it almost seems like God was waiting for me to kind of rely on Him. And uh, so I now have God in my life. I've asked Jesus into my life. Uh, I'm working on becoming the person that I know that I am. And, uh, you know, it's been tough, you know, and uh, it's still, you know, like, I'm, I don't have any urge to smoke or drink or look at porn anymore. I mean, I have my wife. I love her. I'm tired of hurting her feelings and making her feel like she's not good enough and whatnot. You know, she is. She's an angel. Yeah, we may have had our problems in the past. I don't hold nothing against her. She, thank God, doesn't hold nothing against me. We've been working on it. Uh, no relationship is perfect, but we're working on it, you know, and that's a, a step in the right direction, thank God. You know, she's put up with all my crap as well as other family members. You know, I've put them through a lot of crap and, you know, I do apologize for that, you know, thanks for loving me enough to at least, you know, give me a chance, you know, and uh, kind of hopefully see things through. Uh, if you can forgive me, great. If not, I'm done apologizing for all the stuff. I've already apologized to God. I've apologized to most everybody that I've done wrong. Uh, if I've done you wrong and you're watching this video, I'm sorry. Hopefully you can find it in your heart to forgive me, but I'm tired of apologizing, man. You know, I'm, I'm working on bettering myself. I don't need that kind of negative energy in my life right now. I'm trying to set things straight and move on, you know, and be happy, be positive, be at peace. So, you know, that's kind of one of the, that's a little bit about me, you know, uh, kind of to give you an idea of who I am. I'm uh, going to cut things a little bit short here now. Uh, that was just my testimony, kind of to give you a better idea of who I am. And, uh, you know, with you at Raw Fulfillment, you know, if you're watching this video, you know, if you're having a hard time and need a male's perspective, sort of say I'm a pretty, you know, happy-go-lucky guy, you know, I've, I've never been about the negativity, the anger, you know, stuff like that when I'm sober, you know, so, you know, if you need a male's perspective on anything, be it, you know, the porn, the drugs, the alcohol, uh, any type of male problems that you may be having, uh, I'll give you my best advice now. I'm no psychiatrist or anything like that, you know, as you can obviously tell, I've had my ups and downs and I've been down the, you know, the run around and the gamut. But I can tell you, Jesus is there for you. He loves you. Don't think for one second that you're unobtainable. I mean, if you read in the Bible, there's murderers, adulterers, left and right, you know, people that have done probably worse stuff than you that God's forgiven. So don't feel like you're out of touch, man. I, it's the devil getting in your head. The devil's gotten in my head more than enough, you know, saying, oh, you're not going to make it to heaven. You're not good enough. It's like, nah, bro. Like, I, I serve a good God. I serve a God of mercy, a God of hope, love, and trust, and I gave myself to him, so, you know, it cost you nothing, really, like, I mean, hold God at his word, man, you know, I mean, what do you got to lose, you know, say, you know, you make it to your end of days, and you pass away, and you're worm food, game over, done, you got nothing to lose, but what if you're wrong, you know, what if you make it to your end of days, and you didn't give your life to Christ, are you willing to gamble on that, you want to go to hell, 
You want to think that you're not able to be saved? More power to you, man. I, I, I wish the best for you. I pray for you, you know? Like, I, I used to care about everybody, you know, everybody's salvation, everybody's life. I can't do that no more. I'll help the people that want to be helped, but there's some people that I still consider friends, you know? They may worship the devil, this, that, and the other. And yeah, I might preach to them. I, I have my own beliefs. I have my own life to live. I have my own salvation I have to worry about with my Father in heaven. And I'm not going to go around because a lot of people, they run into stuff like that. You know, they may be dealing with their own problems and you come around and hustling them and peddling them Jesus Christ like it's the newest thing to do. And maybe they got hurt from somebody who was a follower of Christ. Or maybe they pushed it down their throat to enough to make them want to rebel. You know, you got to love people, man, however they are. You know, I've met a couple of people even online, you know, they're devil worshipers and stuff like that. It's a respect thing. You want to worship the devil? Hey, man, you do you. Me? I love God. I love Jesus Christ. You know, they never come to me and tell me, oh, you know, you're doing it wrong. You know, you should worship the devil. Da, 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 da. They might have their own opinions on things and tell me about it. And I have my own opinion on things, too. It's like, hey, man, I love God. I love Jesus Christ. You know, you do you. I do me. It's a respect thing. You know, I'm not going to treat you as any less of a human being than you already are sort of say so to any of you out there that are listening to this and you know ever need any help any advice you know just want me to pray for you or anything like that looking for a male perspective go ahead and hit me up on raw fulfillment hit me up on this comment you can also hit me up on my email address that's b-r-e-t-t-p-a-r-k-i-n-8-2 at gmail.com brettparkin82 at gmail.com if you want to contact me directly hit me up there i check it every once in a while you know and you know if i see your email on there i'll, I'll pray for you bro i'll you know I'll, I'll you know do what i can you know like i said i'm not perfect you know i'm just another child of god who's lost and now saved and working on bettering myself as a human being so thank you for listening to me today appreciate you guys you have a great rest of your day and uh, god bless